Okay, so this week we're going to talk about random forests, and since I was going to talk about clustering next week, I figured I'd just combine these two. So, first I'll talk about random forest. The random forest is a type of algorithm that consists of many decision trees, like we talked about a few weeks ago. It creates multiple trees with different random features and then tries to find the one with the best predictive power. So here is kind of an example to try to simplify what the random forest algorithm is doing. We start with our training data, which is the instance at the top. Then the algorithm creates its first decision tree and then keeps track of its predictive power. Then it creates another decision tree and keeps track of its power or predictive power and then Etc. until it goes through all the different possible iterations or whatever your cutoff is. And then it just takes the majority voting or takes the, the, the best kind of, the best model with the predictive power and that's how it gives its kind of final class assignment. Now, when it comes to that majority voting, is that the percentage of uh, accuracy that we see? Or do yeah. we see the majority of voting? So it, it's trying uh, with each iteration it's kind of recording what the like here it shows kind of like the pathways in the tree and whichever one is the most accurate is the one that you would go so when you're trying to classify it's going to have all these possible classification and it's going to pick kind of the best one and that's what it's going to decide so that's the idea of the majority voting or like um, if the other way I look at it Let's say we run a thousand of these little trees and the majority of them pick whatever classification we're looking for. I mean, if it was like good, bad or something and a simple one, and the majority of them are picking good, then that's how it's picking it. And that's, uh, the majority is how we get our percentage of accuracy. So it's going to take the, the mean value, I think. I think it's a mean value for regression and like code for looking at classification. Oh, okay. So, we talked um, about decision trees previously, but particularly about CART or classification or regression trees. So with a single decision tree, we start at the top and with each step down, we try to classify as many instances as possible. And that's where the term greedy comes from. Because it's trying to take as much of the, of the classification or error or variance that it's trying to explain in each step down the tree. So if we had like a simple set of data with two predictors and a logical response variable, we can plot that. So blue is good. And um, green is bad. Our goal is to classify this new white circle here in the middle. So uh, it kind of looks like what um, if you're looking at it from a cluster standpoint, that's what this graph down here looks like. Uh, so we can see with the greedy recursive partitioning, we group our data. So we see that the tree breaks at first that if ti is greater than 5, that is the first split. So, see it here, and if ti is greater than 5, so everything to the right of 5 gets its own classification here. Then, the second split basically says if p is greater than 3, this is another group. And that's this one. What that is saying. Basically it's saying p is not 3, but and this, what's left over, greater than 3, creates another classification. Then, the last split looks to see if ti is greater than 2, but less than 5. We can see that this is not a perfect algorithm, but it does classify our data point in question. It classifies it as good, I think. So, that's kind of a simple way to look at it. So, each tree in the random forest is constructed with this algorithm. We have a set of training cases in and a number of variables, which we'll call capital M. And then input a set of lowercase m variables, where lowercase m is less than uppercase m, which you know makes sense because we can't exceed our total number of variables. 
um, we create a training set and test set like we do in all the other algorithms, and we can do this with either a random split, like we do 70-30 in some of the algorithms, or we can do a bootstrap with, with replacement sample, which is generally better if you have um, less data. So at each step of the tree, we randomly choose the set of variables we will use to predict. Uh, then we select the best splitting model and use it to classify our new data set or the test set. So here is a, a flowchart of how the algorithm works, but it's basically what I just said in the, on the last slide. But this is kind of like the computer science flowchart that you can make in Visio for what's going on in the algorithm. I 
divided into two types, partitional and hierarchical. The main difference between them is the nested function and the hierarchical clustering. What does that mean? Um, we'll get to that in a second. It'll make sense when we look at it. Um, so see how it can be nested? Like you have one giant cluster and the clusters can be within each other and so it ends up looking kind of uh, like this. Oh, okay. Um, Very good. Um, in partitional clustering, we have our data points and each point can only be in one cluster. So that's how they differentiate. Basically, we want to create clusters where we're going to talk about centroid in a second, but center of this cluster, that all the points that are in that cluster are closest to that centroid point. So in hierarchical clustering, it tends to be more tree-like. We have, for example, a set of data where there are people, and then we can divide those people into male and female. So that could be our, our first little break. And then, um, again, by age, and that creates this hierarchical cluster. But because it is unsupervised, we do not know how the algorithm will cluster the data prior to it occurring. Um, let's see. So one example of uh, partitional clustering is something called k-mean clustering. The goal with this algorithm is to select a point at the center of the cluster, and then our training data points are then assigned to the closest centroid. So kind of what I was saying on the other side. We then assign the number of clusters we are looking for. So the algorithm randomly selects the centroid points and then assigns the data points to that cluster. Then it will move the centroid point and reassign the data points until it finds the optimal clusters. So generally starts out random or uses the mean or average of the points of the cluster to guide where the centroid point will go. Most time it only takes a few iterations so it can, the centroids can be found very quickly and only minor centroid adjustments are made after that. <clears throat> so in general, well, you want to minimize the complexity or learning complexity of the algorithm where complexity is calculated based on the number of points, of clusters, number of iterations, and the number of attributes or features down here. Um, so, here's an example of two different clusterings. So, you can kind of see why one is going to be the optimal and the other is suboptimal. Um, the optimal, optimal clustering shows three distinct groups, and the suboptimal clustering created three group, groups, but we can see that it's split based on x being less than zero and y being less than one. And thus, the distances between the green and blue clusters are not optimal in these suboptimal clustering on the right. So alternatively, we can look at hierarchical clustering. Like before, we can see how the tree shape and unsupervised random forest might be useful in this situation. Also, a good way to do feature selection on uh, if you have a large amount of variables. We might want to use hierarchical clustering if we have no assumptions on the number of clusters or if there is an inherent taxonomy of the data. So it's used a lot in like biological sciences where we uh, <clears throat> have a good idea of what we're trying to classify. Or, um, let's see. Last thing. We can do this kind of clustering in a couple of different ways. One is called agglomerative where we start from a point and look at the points around it and merge the closest pairs. The other is called divisive, it is where we start with a giant cluster, of basically all the, all, all the points, and then, try, and then start trying to segment the cluster to find the right uh, amount of clusters. They both basically achieve the same cluster, but it depends on if we start from the large and move smaller, or if we start from the small and move larger. That's that. So how do you know what a perfect number for clusters is? Um, I really don't know. I don't 